Demo Donna with Sparkle and Sprinkle, and if you haven't guessed, we are doing Christmas in July for this month's Video Kit Club. We have this awesome stamp set by Becky Muir, and it is super cute and really fun. And the card we are going to be doing is this guy here, and I'm going to be showing you an embossing trick to create these really fun, messy lights, and some really cool tips with our dimensional glue. Also with this month you are going to have all of the supplies in your kit to make six cards instead of five. Getting ready for the holidays. I hope you guys enjoy this one as much as I do. Thanks for watching. So to create the awesome goose here I actually went ahead and used Copic. So I'm gonna do Copics in this video technique which will be fun and something I've never done before on the video kit club. So a lot of you have asked me to show you coloring techniques. So here we go. Um, for those of you who don't have Copics or don't want to give them a try, you can go ahead and order the digital image already pre-colored for this stamp set. So there are two options. So when you're ordering your video kit club this month, go ahead and request the digital image if you don't want to give Copics a shot. If you do, step on this journey with me. We'll have lots of fun. Okay. So, the typical ink pad for using Copics is the Memento ink pad. I just recently ordered one because I don't use Copics a lot. So I don't even own a Memento ink pad. So what I'm going to do is do the Versamark and the Sparkle and Sprinkle Black embossing powder. I definitely recommend using the Memento ink pad, but like I said, I don't have it. So I'm going to go with the second best option. Now. When using your Copics, it does tend to pull some of the black out from the embossing powder, so just don't blend too aggressively. Okay, so I just took my static free bag and rubbed it all over my cardstock, and that is from the Paper Cut. We love their cardstock. Um, also, with Copics, they recommend using the Nina cardstock, I believe it's called. I don't have any of that on hand either, so I've never used it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my paper cut cardstock that I have here today. Okay, I Versamarked my stamp and I'm going to stamp it on my cardstock. And now I am going to take my black embossing powder and just go ahead and sprinkle that all over my image. Give that a little tap. And of course I left my ceiling fan on, but we'll just ignore that. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and heat set. So I am just going to start from the bottom and work my way all the way up. Um, you do not get black embossing powder in your kit. So if you need that, you can go ahead and order that. Okay, once that's completed, you can go ahead and cut your little goose out like I did here. And that is all you will need the black embossing powder for. And next we are going to color with our Copics. So I don't even own very many, so I don't know if these would be, if I had all the millions of colors to choose from, like some of you guys at home, that these would be the colors that I would choose for this. But I went ahead and just picked out what I thought would work. And that's what we're using. So there it is. Um, so I learned that the first letter of Copics means it's in the color family. So they all have their three different colors. And I am just going to go ahead. This is a really simple design if you've never done Copics. This is definitely a really simple thing to start working with. So I'm just going to go ahead and color it in. I am not going to get fancy with like the three different color shading techniques. Like I said, I'm kind of new to the Copic scene. So I'm just gonna go ahead and color it in and then just do a little shading at the end. And I don't have the whole like three different colors of reds to do like the lightest color first and everything. So we're just gonna go basic here, guys. So if you're on this journey with me and you have never used Copics before either, this will be a fun start for you. And this particular red that I'm using right now is R24. And when coloring, a really fun thing to do, especially with the Sparkle and Sprinkle stamp sets, is we pretty much provide a guide for you. 
And you can follow that guide or you can go on your own beaten path and change up the color palette as well. So what I'm talking about is the stamp set here has a beautiful color image for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue coloring and speed up my video. Or maybe not. Okay, so there's all my red. Now I'm gonna go and do the green that I have, which is G14. And the blue for the eyes, I'm using aqua, which is BG15. It happens to be one of the only blues I have. And now for a little trick like what most people do with Copic markers is the whole shading and blending. So I am going to take Y06 and I'm going to color in the whole beak. I don't really even have an orange. And see right there what I'm talking about is my embossing powder kind of bled a little bit. So like I said, the Memento ink pad, because these are alcohol markers, the Memento ink pad won't bleed. So that's probably the most ideal way to go when using Copics. I always like to listen to whatever the manufacturer suggests. I usually try my own thing for a while, and then if it doesn't work, go back to following the rules, which is never good. So I covered, well, it is good. I colored the inside of the beak with the yellow, and now I'm just gonna do a little circular motion. This is a really small area, so like applying the shading, like if you watch any Copic videos, they tell you to find your where your light's coming from which all is good and fine when you're doing like big images this is a pretty tiny one so i'm not going to get particular on finding where my light's coming from um, also i'm not the expert so we're just doing some fun coloring with copics okay so now i'm going to take that yellow again and i'm going to blend and just kind of lighten up that orange that I brought in. Oh, and I didn't even say what color that was. Light Rouge R14. So I'm just going to do that and then maybe go again around the edges. She's got such a beautiful beak. I don't want to ruin it. I'll just give her a little shadowing. Come back in with the yellow. It's really fun to play, but we don't have time for that. So we're just gonna do a little shading with one of the two grays I have. This is cool gray. And I am just simply going to add a little gray around her body here. For not using Copics for very long, I found they're pretty easy to use. Um, they blend so nicely. If you've never used Copics before, it's kind of fun. And, you know, like I said, you can get all hung up and watch all the technique videos and go get your certification and become a pro. Or you can just experiment like I'm doing here, have some fun, kind of use uh, the Sparkle and Sprinkle stamp card as your guide on how to color. So I just really lightly went around with the gray as you could see there. And I am done. I am going to do one more thing, which is really fun, taking this colorless blender. And I'm just gonna draw a line up the middle of the socks and just pull some of the color out. And that gives it a little bit of dimension and make my sock tubes look a little round when that dries. You could see it a little bit better in this guy here. And then our light bulbs are going to be done with our dimensional glue. So I am done with my Copics. That was fun and easy and has such an incredibly clean look. And next what I am going to do is work on our Christmas lights. So I am going to quickly show you a really fun technique using a ballpoint pen. And I'm going to be using one of the embossing powders that you get in the kit, which is Silver Bells. And I'm simply going to take my ballpoint pen and a little piece of paper. Make sure your ballpoint pen is nice and ready to go. And I'm going to follow 
just going to do a little bit at a time the strand of lights and then I'm going to take my embossing powder and I am going to heat set. So this is how you can do a really fine line of embossing. So if you're writing someone's name. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this across the whole string of stamps. So you could see the whole string of lights. So you could see here where I did the silver. So I'm going to repeat that technique on the whole light bulbs. If you don't want to do this part, you could skip it. If you don't have that steady of a hand, it's not going to make or break your card design. It's just a fun additional element that you could do. All right, so once you've completed that, you have a cool strand of silver lights. So the next fun thing that we are going to do, which I had a blast, is filling in our light bulb. So you are going to be getting Fire Engine Red as well as Elegant Emerald. And this is going to be really fun with my fan on. But I'm going to take the dimensional glue that you get in your kit and the Q-tip, the Q-tip, the toothpick. We're always using Q-tips. And I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out. And I am going to take my toothpick and I am just going to go and fill in every other light bulb or so. And then I'm going to apply my green, my elegant green glitter. And then I'm going to go and do the same with the fire engine red. So skip a couple, but just do one color at a time. So because I'm going to come back and do the red, I'm just doing everything first that I want to be green and that way my colors won't intermix. So that's good for my Elegant Emerald. Okay, so once you have all your green glitter covered, give it a good flick and now you'll see all my adorable green light bulbs and then we are going to repeat with the red. Doo -doo. All right, so I am going to take my toothpick again and fill in all the remaining bulbs, including the ones in the background that you can't really see. I'm just going to put a drop of glue over it. And I know it's not the tightest shot, so I'm going to hold it up so you could see. I'm basically just taking my toothpick and my dimensional glue and just going right into the center. It's a really small dot and repeat over the whole thing cover with your fire engine red and you're good to go and there is your lights on your goose now the last thing I'm going to do to my image here before I mount it is I am simply going to take my dimensional glue and I'm going to use my dimensional glue as if it is lacquer. So I know you've seen this technique used several times with different products, but you can actually do this with your dimensional glue as well. And I am simply going ahead and filling in my beak with dimensional glue. And that's how it will look like for the next few hours. And as it dries, you get this beautiful, shiny, and dimensional raised bill. So you can do that technique with your dimensional glue, which is all. All right, next you're gonna take your seine, and any of these three bottom seines will work. The naughty or nice, decisions, decisions. All I want for Christmas is five minutes of peace and quiet. Yeah, I know how that feels. And I'm using season greetings from the Funny Farm, which is completely relevant for my household as well. Okay, so I am going to take, once again, my static-free bag so I can emboss my seine, tap off any extra powder that might have clouded up on your paper. I'm going to take my Versamark and my seine, and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp my design. And I am going to be using Silver Bells Embossing Powder again. That comes in your kit. 
And you can go ahead and stamp it all six times at the same time and emboss it and get them all done at the same time. Give it a good flick and then go ahead and heat set. I've already done that so we're going to move over to assembly on our card and we are going to assemble before we do the final and one of the fun, fun, fun things that we're going to do on our card. So this is a gatefold and what I've done is I've mounted my to my goose as well as my seine onto the black backing paper and then I am going to take off my terrific tape so I put it on a little less than half that way when I center it I don't have an issue with it not with it going over the edge and sticking to both sides so because I put it on a little over half it's definitely just going to stick to a little under half so the adhesive's about right here. So it's just gonna stick to this side. And then same with our lovely goose. I'm gonna peel off my adhesive. This is our terrific tape. Hold that down again. And now make sure your terrific tape doesn't touch the card before you're ready to place it because it is super permanent. All right, once I have that down, I'm going to stick that there and now you have this really fun opening so when they go to open the card they've got the image going in one direction and the same going in another which is really fun. Alright so now we are going to get to our crazy little lights right here. So this is going to be really fun. I suggest some practicing if you want to practice, I did a couple different doodles and different designs and practiced using the toothpick as well as the glue out of the dimensional glue bottle itself. Okay, so I am just simply going to do one half and then the other half. And I am going to get my silver bells embossing powder ready. And I'm going to make sure just by doodling that my pen is ready to write. And I am going to... Let's do some scribbles just like that and I am not one that is known for drawing so if I can do this you can do this we can all scribble we've all been there so don't worry don't be afraid like I said you can practice a little bit on another paper before you go directly onto your cardstock so I applied my embossing powder and now I'm just going to go Guy. And I'm just going to do another crazy scribble. And add my embossing powder. All right. And then go ahead and heat. Now, the last step we are going to add our Christmas lights. So I'm going to do one layer of dots first to do one color of glitter. So we'll start with our green again. And now you have two options. You can once again take your Q-tip and do dots like that, which make a smaller dot like these guys here. Or you can actually use the glue out of the bottle which created the larger look. So it just depends what you're going for. Play around on a scrap piece of paper for a little bit. Get a feel of how the glue comes out of the bottle. If you're comfortable with it, go ahead and do that. If you want to have more control, I definitely suggest using the toothpick. So I'm going to go and do a series and I'm kind of pulling it away. So I'm adding the dot on the front of the line and then pulling it away. And I'm just going to add a couple random ones in here. And you want to be slow to lift up so you don't get that Hershey Kiss drop dropping in the wrong spot and giving you a big giant bulb. And I'll raise that a little bit so you can see. So I'm just basically dropping it and lifting it, pulling it away from the line a little bit. See that? Okay, so I'm going to finish on the other side. And then we'll do all... Alright, give it a good flick. Make sure everything's covered in glitter. If you see right here 
one of my glue dots kind of smeared, I am just going to take my fingernail tool and I'm just going to push it down. So look at that. It's like a magic because it was still wet. So I was able to get rid of that glitter smear that I didn't want. And there you go. There's your finished card. Hope you guys enjoyed it.